Using Viper, I was trying to write a contract that swaps two tokens on Uniswap. In order to swap tokens on Uniswap, you need to call this function called swap exact tokens for tokens on a Uniswap contract located at this address. One of the inputs that you need to pass for this function is a dynamic array of addresses. But here's the problem. Viper doesn't support dynamic arrays. To solve this problem of not being able to pass a dynamic array as input, we'll have to use a low-level function called raw call and handcraft the dynamic array. So in this video, I'll show you how to use raw call in Viper. We'll go over how to handcraft the dynamic array when we're using raw call. And we'll also take a look at how to convert an output that is a dynamic array. For this video, I won't be using this contract, but I'll put the link to this contract in the descriptions below. We'll start with a very basic example. We'll call a function on another contract and pass in two inputs, the x and y, which are both uint256. And for a debugging purpose, I've created an event named log. Using this, we'll log some value and some message associated with that value. The target contract. The contract that we're going to be calling using raw call has a single function named test. This is the function that we're going to be calling using raw call. To keep this example very simple, it takes in two UN inputs, x and y, and then it logs the values of x and y. Notice that this contract is written in solidity. The reason for this is because later on, we're going to be passing in a dynamic array as input. And dynamic arrays are not supported in Viper. So the only way to test contracts with dynamic array is to use solidity. To use the function raw call, you'll need to prepare some inputs. The first input is the contract address that we're calling. Next, we need to prepare the data that we're going to be passing to this contract above. The first part of the data is what's called a method ID, which is the first 4-byte hash of the function signature. After the method ID, we need to pass in the actual input. The last input to call the raw call is the max output size, the maximum size of the output returned from calling the function. The first input, contract address. This is easy. This will be this address which we named test. The next part is the data. We can prepare the data by saying concat. We can get the method ID of the function that we're going to be calling by calling a built-in function called method ID. It takes in a single input. And here we need to pass in the function signature. The function that we're going to be calling is named test. And the test function is going to take in the input of uint256, comma, and another uint256. Next, we need to prepare the two inputs that we're going to be passing to this test function. The two inputs are uint256. So here we'll say convert the input x which is a type uint into bytes 32. Here we convert x to bytes 32 because 32 bytes is the amount of bytes that is required to represent a uint 256. And we'll also convert y to bytes 32. And that is our data. Since the test function does not return any outputs yet, the max output size, we'll set this equal to zero. And we're now ready to see our first example on Remix. So I've copied the two contracts, one in Solidity and one in Viper, and then deployed them here. And now we'll be testing this raw call function on the Viper contract, which we'll call the Solidity contract and log the two inputs. So I'm going to copy the address of the Solidity contract expand the Viper contract, and then I'm going to call the function call test, 
pasting in the address of the Solidity contract and passing our two units. And for this example, I'll just pass 1 and 2. You can see here that the transaction was successful. And it also logged our two inputs, x equals 1 and y equals 2. For the next example, I want to see what happens when the call to this function fails. Does this function also fail or is there some error handling that we need to do? To make the Solidity contract fail, we'll require that x is equal to y. And if it's not, we'll throw an error with the message x is not equal to y. So I want to see what happens when we pass in a different value of x and y. Does this function also fail or not? I've recompiled and redeployed the two contracts. Let's see what happens when this condition fails. So I'm going to copy the address of the Solidity contract and then call the call test function passing in the address and we want this condition to fail. So here for the value of x, we'll pass in 1. For the value of y, we'll pass in 2. So you can see here that the transaction failed. So when this function failed, the function inside Viper also failed. And we didn't have to do any extra error handling. So for the next example, I want to show you how to call a function where one of the input is a dynamic array. The first thing that we'll need to do inside the Viper contract is update the function signature. So here we'll say the third input is a dynamic array of type uint256. And now comes the tricky part. How do we create a raw data that represents a dynamic array of uint256? So the first part of preparing a dynamic array is telling where the dynamic array starts. This is called the offset. Here the dynamic array starts after 96 bytes. This is because the first input takes up 32 bytes. The next input also takes up 32 bytes. And the offset itself takes up another 32 bytes. So that's 3 times 32, which is equal to 96. After the first 96 bytes, the next 32 bytes specifies the length of the dynamic array. For this example, we'll set the length equal to 2. The next 32 bytes will be the first element of the array, and the next 32 bytes will be the second input of the array. I've converted all these parameters. The offset will be 96, the length of the array will be 2, the first element of the array will pass 88, for the second element will pass 99. Inside Remix, I recompiled and redeployed the contracts. So we'll call this call test function, copying the address of the Solidity contract, paste it here. From the previous example, the two inputs x and y has to be the same. So we'll pass 1 and then 1. So the transaction was successful, and I want to double check the values of the dynamic array which are logged over here. We expect the first element to be 88 and the second element to be 99. And you can see that this event was logged over here. The value of x is 88 and value of y is 99. For the last example, I'll explain how to handle dynamic array outputs. So now this test function returns a dynamic array of type uint. The two values that will be returned are 888 and 999. So let's see how to capture the output and parse the output inside Viper. We'll first capture the output by naming the output as res and it will be of type bytes. The size of the bytes we don't know yet so I'll put a question mark here for now and say equals. And I'll also put a question mark over here as well since we don't know the size of the output yet. Similar to how we prepare the input for a dynamic array, the output also follows the same format, offset, length of the array, and then the elements of the array. Since each element is a UN256, the size of this whole output will be 32 times 4, which is equal to 128. 
So for the max output size over here, I'll put 128. And same goes over here, 128. To parse the output into data types that we want, we can get the offset as type EUN 256 by calling the function extract32, passing the raw output and the starting position to read the output from. So here we're saying from the rest, start at zero, and then read the next 32 bytes. The output type will be UN256. So that's how we get the offset. Similarly, we can get the length of the dynamic array output by saying from the raw data, starting at 32, read the next 32 bytes. And likewise, for the first element of the array, start at 64, read the next 32 bytes. And the second element of the array, start at 96, read the next 32 bytes. To double check that we got all of this right, we'll log all of the values using a event. All right, I redeployed the two contracts. Let's now find out what these values are. We expect the length to be two, and y0 to be 888, and y1 to equal 999. So I'll call call test with the address of the solidity contract and pass in the input one and one. And inside the transaction logs, if I scroll all the way down, you can see here that it logged the value of y0 is 888 and the value of y1 is equal to 999. Okay, so those were examples of how to use raw call to handle dynamic array both as input and outputs. Thanks for watching.